G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, today we're tackling another thing that annoyed me on my drive down to Melbourne in my abandoned barra, which is terrible speakers. So back when I was 18, 19, had a banging stereo in this thing and uh, that all got ripped out when I sold it. So it's all factory speakers in it as far as I'm aware. So went out to Autobahn this morning, grabbed some new kicker uh, 5x7s for the parcel shelf and some uh, six and a half inch uh, speakers for the front doors and some spacers. So gonna have a crack at throwing all them in today. Um, not going for like a full on stereo, just literally just a, a speaker replacement, um, stock head unit, all that sort of stuff. Not gonna blow the budget on um, upgrading everything, but uh, there's just enough so that I can get a little bit more better stereo. I mean, it's, it's now probably gonna be just as good as like a, a newer car factory stereo. So I'm um, not looking to, you know, break any records. So just make it a little bit nicer. So we'll rip into it. And another thing we're doing today, I completely forgot to buy LED parkers yesterday. So we're gonna chuck some LED parkers in as well. Make that um, whole LED headlight setup look a little bit better. All right, so because I can't remember how to pull any of this apart, I'm gonna start with the rears because the fronts are real easy. So I'm just gonna get a screwdriver and try and flick these covers off and I'll show you how they flick off. So basically it's just a whole bunch of tabs. So you just, you locate one, you flick it up and then you flick the rest of the whole speaker up uh, just using a flat blade screwdriver. That exposes the speaker. Now, I think they're e-torque sockets normally, but these look like they've just got um, self-tappers in them. So I'm just gonna rip them out with a self-tapper and see how we go. Uh, well, with a Phillips head, not with a self-tapper. Obviously all of my tools are at home. So I have bought myself a little Milwaukee ratcheting screwdriver. So that should actually be able to get all these out. It'll help me get all the front door trims off as well. And I've also bought a really long Phillips head bit for getting the front door trims off. So uh, if you are looking to buy tools to do this project as well, um, this may not necessarily help you get your speakers out, but it'll help you get the door trims off. Um, I'll show you the socket that you need to get the front speakers out if they are still the E sockets. All right, so just ignore the hand monster poking through from the boot. But um, yeah, just four Phillips heads and um, under the plug. It's literally just like a three, like a, a T-piece connector -y dog. Um, Autobahn cell looms to plug into that and then terminals to the, go to the aftermarket speakers. So I don't have to cut or crimp any wires, which is great. So I've already got a set of those as well. So we'll uh, smack the first speaker in. First back speakers out. Um, these things are absolutely disgusting. One thing I was umming and ahhing about doing in this video was whether I was going to record what it sounds like stock and what it sounds like with the aftermarket speakers. But that never translates in video anyway. If you're listening on a phone, it's gonna sound crap both times. So at the end of the day, it's just a waste of time. Don't wanna waste everyone else's time. Um, just take my word for it at the end. If I tell you it's way better, it's way better. Um, everyone knows what a stock Falcon stereo sounds like. Everyone's been in a taxi before. So, I think interestingly enough, these kicker speakers on Autobahn's website are listed as five by seven, but in store, the, all the boxes say six by eight. And um, but the part number is the same as the five seven. So we'd spent like half an hour in Autobahn looking for the right size speakers. So what I'll do quickly is just um, measure them up to the stock speakers and see if they are gonna fit. So first comparison, they look bang on. So I think we're gonna be right. So I know obviously a six by nine can also fit, but I think you gotta cut the holes out a little bit more. I'm uh, I'm not really willing to get that game into this yet. I've, I'm like at a waterproofing factory with no very minimal tools. So, and a guy that doesn't really know how to use them. So let's see how these go. All right, so one thing to notice, uh, we've got uh, three R23. So we've actually got gassy speakers in this. Um, anyone that knows the gassy rods is fucking 3R23, knows what's up. Um, so that's the factory Ford plug. Um, compare that to the kicker plugs, which are the single spade terminals. So you get yourself a set of these AeroPro adapters. Um, there's your part number, APS58. Um, they're about eight bucks for two pack at uh, Autobahn. So you get one pack for the front, one pack for the rear, and then you plug your speaker straight in. No soldering, cutting, or any of that required. So makes life easier. So once that new sub harness is all fitted to the speaker, you can just plug that into the factory loom and go about putting the speaker back into the hole. All right, that speaker is all screwed in and I can now put the cover back on the top. And once the cover's refit, looks like you've never done anything. So that's what we want to see, a bloody stealthy job. I'll get the other side wrapped up now and uh, we'll start on the front. All right, the other speaker is out and new one going in. Try and do this one-handed. If you want to plug that one in. <laughs> Bloody beautiful, I did that. 
foot. I lost the speaker. When you go past balls deep. Yeah, let go. Let go. All right, then we just got to do the screws up. All right, guys, so the rears are all done. Uh, just got to remove the front door trims now, which is one screw here, one screw behind that, one screw behind that, one screw here, one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here. Then once the door trim's off, uh, once all those screws are out, you just pull the bottom of the door trim this way and then lift it up. For these two screws in here, this little chode screwdriver won't be big enough, so we get him a little extender. There you go, much better. Once the door trim's off, you want to remove the speaker as well. Um, same as the rear, except now I bought Atox sockets because these are normally an E6. Um, I do have a set of these at home, so I'll probably just return these. I don't need them anymore. Um, and these are just Phillips heads. So we definitely don't need to use those sockets that I bought specifically for this because someone's already replaced them with Phillips heads. So in your car, if they're stock, they'll be E6 sockets probably. But in this case, they're just Phillips. Okay, so at some point, obviously when Autobahn would have installed my stereo for me when I was 18, um, they've snipped that plug off, but luckily I put it back on when I put the stock, stock speakers back in when I sold the car. So this um, door seal must have been leaking a little bit. So a little bit of rust on that speaker, but it did work all right. But uh, obviously that'll be gone. Um, the door has now been sealed properly and uh, we shouldn't get any more rust. But same deal as last time. Except now we're fitting six inch speakers instead of five by sevens. So we've got an adapter plate. I'll show you how that works. Okay, so that's the factory shape. This is a six and a half inch. And then these, these are the spacer plates. So once that's, uh, I'm assuming that goes on the front of it. I'll set this up in a sec, hang on. So that basically just speaker screws to this adapter and then that adapter screws to the door. So this adapter, I'll just double check, make sure it's the same bolt pattern. Yep, so that appears to line up with the factory speaker holes, so that should work. And then that thing takes up the, the oval shaped hole in the door so you don't have the speaker escaping around it and then the speaker just screws to that. So the screws for this speaker don't actually go into the door, they only go into this. So obviously, uh, just wanna get your four screws situated into the spacer, do them up with your short two inch extension. Scary. Bring them all down before we snug them. Get them all situated. Word of the week is situated, in case you couldn't tell from my last video. Nah, just kidding, we'll do it by hand. Given this is just a shitty little plastic spacer, we'll just do this by hand. Just so we don't cause any dramas. I mean, I'm all for uh, just running it home with the... If it wasn't plastic, I definitely would. Right, now we have a 5x7 speaker, which these hopefully fit. Anyway, again, same deal as last time. AirPro looms make life easy. Then they plug straight into the factory loom. So not that it really matters, but um, I set it up so that the logo's upright. It really doesn't matter. Anyway, we want to go ahead and plug these dogs in. stash all that wiring down into the door, line all this up, oh okay, um, we're going to need to use smaller screws here because they're actually touching here, so I'm going to swap out to some smaller screws and we'll come back. Right, so I swapped out those two for some two self tappers, they do stick out just a hair, but we'll see how much that affects us. What we end up maybe doing is just drilling two holes like in here, just so that it um, clears anyway, it doesn't really matter. Alright, so I just got um, one screw started. They stick out a tiny bit, but because this is just a plastic bracket, I think it's going to flex enough where these will just do up, so um, I'm just going to probably not use that because then I'll have to get in the way of the video camera to actually be able to do these up. I'm just excited that I think you're going to absolutely just ram it home. No, nah, well look, I'm all for that, but um, the problem <laughs> with that is the, uh, I'll end up in the frame because I can't, like, rail at home with my left hand from two foot away. Sorry, from um, two inches away. Yep, now that's all screwed back into the door. Just gave it a test listen. Sounds bloody heaps better than stock, so we'll be whacking the door trim back on. Then just whack your door trim back on. 
It's got to get your lock through your lock hole. Don't forget to plug in your two harnesses and run your door handle cable out through the door handle hole. Put everything back together and you're bloody laughing. Then um, I'm missing all the little clips that go in all the blanking holes. They just break and fall out, so YOLO, leave them off. Oh, doesn't really matter, I'm getting black door trims one day. So one of the things I forgot to do when I did the headlights yesterday was, get hard to see, change the parkers. There's these crusty, dimly lit candles, so you're gonna throw some LED bulbs in there now. Guess is just making a start on the driver's side because uh, he's got a socket set today, so we don't have to use a shifter to remove the battery. Um, already pulled this side bulb out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and whack in the LED. There we go, that's just the parker. It's almost as bright as a bloody low beam. So the LED technology's come a long way as well. Back in the day, the bulbs had to go in the right way. These days, it doesn't matter what way they get installed, they still work. I got two sets, so I can do the number plate bulbs as well because no one likes yellow number plate lights. Then again, it's just as simple as flicking this little tab. And my only tool I have to flick that is a fork, so don't judge me, but I'll get that done off camera. It just takes two hands. So once you flick that tab and pull it down, sometimes that can be a pain to get out. And there's also not much wiring, so I do it with the boot open. Um, you can try and squat down and do it with the boot shut, but it's just gonna be a pain in the dick. And then that looks much better. Nice and white instead of crusty yellow. So then just to finish it out, I'll show you what the uh, varying stages of the headlights now look like. So just go Parker's. Yep, then low. Yep, then high. Bloody beautiful. Bloody like a bought one. Now all we gotta do, boys, is we have gotta get these cornering lights working, which means uh, finding some new bulbs for them and um, finding a new set of lenses because this one's good, this one's broken. So I haven't bothered fixing them yet, but they are coming soon. I know these videos are pretty random guys, but uh, I do appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, all that sort of stuff. Um, had a good time in Melbourne over the last week and a half, two weeks. Only filmed two little videos. Uh, there was other stuff I wanted to get done, but we just sort of drowned and found out and didn't have enough time. So anyway, thanks for uh, watching, subscribing, all that. I've already said that, but I'll say it again. Catch you on the next video, which uh, once I'm back in Brizzy, unless I break down on the way up and I may end up making another video, uh, once I'm back in Brizzy, we'll be ripping into some more Barra content um, and hopefully get one of the cars on the dyno maybe.